All right. All right. Well, welcome everyone. Um, grace, peace, and blessing from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, I thank everybody for joining this um, live testimonial session, part two. Um, if you recall, we did a part one where people, you know, shared their testimonies on, you know, especially how they came to Christ. Mm -hmm. um, there were some powerful testimonies on that, very powerful. You know, I know um, Brother Yahaya shared something that was just blew me away, you know, but um, very powerful. So we're, this is a part two, which basically is given an opportunity for those who wanted to share the last session, but was unable to due to time sake. So, and I did mention that there will be a part two because, you know, sometimes people were burning to share certain things, but because of time, um, they weren't able to. So we're gonna allow that to happen in this session. On top of that as well, um, Minister Keisha, my wife, she also has a very awful testimony that she's going to share as well about being involved with the occult, you know, which is very common, you know, especially in our time, you know, a lot of people have been is dealing with, you know, new age occultism practices, things in that nature. And, you know, um, I kind of delve into it a bit as well, but, you know, not as deep as her, but, <laughs> um, and a lot of people reason is, you know, they're seeking the truth. They're seeking something, you know, and, you know, the truth is Christ, Christ Jesus, you know, and at times that when we're seeking for something, but we don't really know that it's actually Jesus, the enemy will come as an angel of light and take advantage of that. And we'll engage in a lot of practices that, you know, they're contrary to the word of God, you know, whatever it may be. And we'll get caught up into a lot of these things, open up doorways, that allow certain spirits to come into our lives or enter into a lot of strongholds, demonic bondages, whatever it may be, you know? So she's definitely gonna be sharing um, her testimony and, you know, shining a light on a lot of things that she's learned and she's in, engaged in. So once again, I thank everybody for joining. We're definitely gonna get started. Okay. No, you wanna pray in? All right, okay. yep. So I'm gonna um, pray us in and, you know, we are going to begin. Heavenly Father, we come to you now in the matchless name of Jesus Christ, and we give you thanks, O Lord God Almighty, for another day. We give you thanks for this time, O Lord God, even this gathering, that we're able to share these testimonies to encourage each other, O Lord God, and also to expose the darkness, O Lord God, to expose the works of darkness, O Lord God Almighty. We know that you have brought us through a lot of things, O Lord God, and that you're using us be a testimony to others, O Lord God Almighty. Have your way, O Lord God, in our lives. Continue to strengthen us and lead us into all truths, O Lord God. Increase boldness in us, O Lord God, where we're not shy to share these things with other people, knowing that what we share can actually help someone, O God, who are going through similar situations that we have went through, O Lord God Almighty. So we thank you, O Lord God, for this opportunity, and we thank you for what you're doing in our lives. Lead us into all truth, O oh Lord God. In the name of Jesus Christ, we give you thanks and we pray. Amen. 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 All right. So we're going to get started. And um, and like I said, first thing, you know, we're going to dive into what uh, Minister Keisha has learned when she was in the occult, occult of practices. So first things first, you know, definitely introduce yourself and Hi, yes, I'm uh, Minister Keisha O'Dane's wife, and I just want to share, um, you know, tap into um, what I learned from being involved in a cult. Um, I can say that, you know, you know, God chooses us and he gives us gifts, even, you know, let's say from the foundation of the world, even before we were born, he blesses us with gifts. So as a child, I always knew that the spiritual realm was real. Um, I could say that, you know, I don't call, walk around, call myself a prophetess, but I do have prophetic gift. And I, I knew that, you know, from a child and others that spoke it, you know, into my life. Um, I grew up in a very chaotic um, childhood home. Looking back on it now, as I matured, you know, in the spirit, you know, in Christ, I knew the reason why I went through a lot of chaotic things in my childhood home is because the house that I grew up in had spirits. And I used to actually see those spirits. I had to be about three or four. I used to see those spirits in that in that home that I grew up in. My father, you know, he was abusive. He used to fight my mom. A lot of crazy things went on in that house. You know, um, to this day, I think about it. And it's just like, wow, man, spiritual, the spiritual realm is very real. So I used to see these spirits like in the middle of the night to where um, 
I'd be so terrified to just get up and go to the bathroom. I used to wet the bed because I used to see these demonic spirits in my childhood home. Okay, so fast forward. Um, you know, I went through some things, you know, growing up, you know, um, supernatural things and experiences that I experienced, you know, throughout my life. I got saved um, when I was about 20, 21 years old. Um, I was still a babe in Christ. I was still searching, you know, deeper spiritual things. I was into astrology still because in the church, they don't teach us that, you know, delving into astrology and all these things, like they don't talk about spiritual, these demonic spiritual things in the church, at least the church that I attended, they didn't, they didn't really teach on that. So I, I thought that um, reading like my sign and astrology and looking at certain things that I wasn't supposed to be delving into wasn't wrong because the teachers never taught that. So anyway, I'm attending this church. I served on ministry, experienced things there. Let's say, honestly, I, I was a victim of church hurt, the first church. Then went to another church, joined another church, you know, still a babe, still on milk, um, experienced church hurt there. Me and my sister, actually, we was very, very, very diligent in serving on this, this church ministry to where we had relocated, we had moved. So we told the pastor, well, she told the pastor that she was leaving this church. So another thing would kind of rub me the wrong way with the church. I already was hearing negative things about the church even before I, I joined the church. Okay, so... We told the pastor we was relocating. Um, then my sister went to go talk to this pastor and tell him, you know, I'm leaving, you know, because she was like the main one serving on ministry. I was just like visiting and do things here and there. So he said, may the living God I, I serve curse you. So I'm like, wait a minute. These, this is happening in the church. So that really, really like church hurt. I'm like, this can't be real. This, this Jesus stuff, God stuff can't be real. So anyway, um, we left that church. We, we, you know, we were serving on ministry, stuff like that, very active in the church. And then, um, you know, me having that, that, that bruise, that, that, uh, that hurt from the church. It, I never let it, never let God heal it. Now he could have been possibly saying, showing me things about the organized church that it, it wasn't real. However, that didn't mean for me to leave him because sometimes what we do is we categorize our experience with church people or Christians and we put God in that category. God is real. God is almighty. Sometimes people, you know, people are, are um, fallible. God is not. He's infallible. So I categorized that like, man, this is this can't be real. So then I started getting into the black conscious movement. And that's what then a lot of people that, um, you know, started, you know, I started connecting with. They started talking about, you know, the spirituality, getting into it, like um, the yoga um, practice um meditation so then I started getting like you know I, I started creating my own little small group with just like people from different states so I met I became friends with this um one young young woman or whatever she was like really deep into it so we like connected see the enemy when you go on taking the left he's going to send the people to think like oh this is the right thing to do so I'm like oh this is cool I found my tribe so she was into numerology, yoga. I'm into fitness. She was into fitness. That's another way that the enemy comes to. He know that you like something. So you're going to send these people to try to make it look good. The scripture, the enemy comes as the angel of light. That's right. So anyway, so I started, you know, um, getting into meditation, um, started buying crystals, started getting into tarot cards. Like I was addicted to tarot cards, doing readings and receiving readings, um, sex magic, that also, but you know, you want to um, go into the question. Yeah. So that's just a little background, but I'm gonna let Odain ask the question so I can, you know, go according to the questions he want to ask. Yes, that's that that's very pow powerful, and it, it it shows that how um at times when we may be hurt, um the enemy can use that to push mm -hmm. us in the wrong direction. Now, um, you mentioned, you know, um, you know what's it called sex sex magic and things. How, what is that exactly? If you can explain. sex, okay, and the and the cult. In the um, new age, the occult, everything is about intention. Now, when you have these crystals, you they, they have different crystals for different purposes, um, for healing, uh, love crystals, whatever. And it's all based on intention. So you do these like um, incantations and spells with these crystals. It's all based on intention. So sex magic is the same thing. You could either uh, masturbate, sorry for being, you know, being, but anyway, <laughs> masturbate or, you know, sex with self or sex with someone. You base your intention on what you want to manifest 
And then when, when you release or you release together with that person, it's supposed to bring that thing to fruition, it's supposed to manifest that thing that you set your intention on during that sexual act. Okay. Wow. That that's, um, wow. That's definitely, you know, the enemy. Um, and you mentioned something about crystals, mm. my correct crystals. All right. What are these crystals and what do you use them for? How do they it work? It depends. You know, um, it, it's different ones. Um, they're kind of like a blur to me now. I used to know them by name, like, but they have different ones. Um, like certain crystals work together better with other crystals. That's what they teach. So if you wanted to do like a love spell, you would, you know, get these crystals, put them in this bag, write the person name and stuff like that, or burn a candle, whatever. And you're supposed to manifest these things. And then um, supposedly a lot of people that have done it, like myself, you start having these psychic dreams and stuff about the person and stuff. And um, different crystals, if you want healing, you wear these certain crystals, shungite, all this stuff, but they have demonic activations behind them. You know, shungite you wear, they say it brings healing to the body, but really it attracts demons. I noticed when I was wearing the um, evil lie, um, yes. as I told you, I wore the evil eye. And what the evil eye was supposed to do was deter people from um, staring at you, trying to curse you, you know, by staring at you or, or having ill will in their heart. Now, with me, when I was wearing it, I noticed that people were staring at me. I was attracting that more. Now I don't get that. People are very, very nice and kind. Not to say I, I don't uh, come across, you know, people. It's, it's a spiritual thing. So, you know, you're still going to come across nasty people. But when I was wearing the evil eye, I noticed that a lot of people would be staring at me. And I was attracting those evil and demonic spirits that was in other people. So that's a lie that the evil eye deters people from trying to curse you. It will send it back. That's not true. It invites it to you. And uh, um, also um, with the crystals and when I was in a cult, I noticed that a lot of times I would be close to getting into car accidents. Cars would just run the light. All types of crazy stuff would happen to me um, when I was when I was in this. Um, people would just act crazy. I, I noticed how I was seeing like a lot of people that was like demonized and acting crazy and stuff like that. It was just like some crazy things that would happen to me when I was in this occult um doing yoga I would get like a lot of paralyzed dreams when I was um uh actively doing yoga a lot get a lot of demonic dreams as well sexual dreams as well wow wow uh and and that goes to show you how doing these things actually opens up doorways where the enemy comes you know comes into your life and um I remember I, I know you mentioned something about um uh, was it astrology or, astrology or, yeah I was um the the girl I was at the time friends with she would like do, you know, your birthday, um, like do the numbers, like whatever um, month and day you were born, what year, what time that would tell what your sun sign was, your moon sign, and then give you a reading based on that. And then I started getting into it. Um, also charging and cleansing the crystals and stuff like that. You know, if I was on my menses, which, you know, meaning the monthly, whatever, um, it was like supposed to, you're supposed to be more powerful doing your, your uh, menses and stuff like that. So charging and cleansing the crystal, sitting them out during the full moon, um, uh, sunlight, you know, setting them in the window, window sill to, to cleanse them and all that stuff. Cause it would make the power strong, especially if the woman was on her menses or whatever. And also the tarot cards, um, those like, this is what I want to tell you. People that give tarot readings, a lot of times they're going to tell you stuff that is it's going to be true. Divination, right? It's going to be true. That's what makes it makes it addictive because the stuff they say, but it's not from the Holy Spirit. It's from a familiar demonic spirit. I just want people to know that that stuff really does uh, bring people in because it's like, wow, this is really going on in my life is is is, is true. But they're getting well, we used to get our information. People that still do it from a, a demonic or familiar spirit is not from the Holy Spirit. And a lot of times those readings are what things they focus on relationships. They talk a lot about money, uh, relationships, twin flame. That's also demonic. I, I just want to tell you, uh, you, you delving into that, have dealt into it. You need to renounce it. Twin flame relationships and stuff like that is all demonic. It's not, it's not of God at all. And, and they will tell you things and that will be exactly what we, will be going on in your life at that time. But it's from a demonic familiar spirit, not from the Holy Spirit. Wow. Yes. And um, I like how you mentioned, um, you know, divination, um, 
in basically in the occult, which is, you know, contrary to you know, right, prophecy. Right. And that's what I want to touch on, too. Like for those of us who operate in a prophetic or have a prophetic mantle. See, the enemy, he wants he wants us to crave or oh, we have to have more power. We want more. See, in the occult, manifesting all this stuff is things that you that that try to appease your flesh. Now, when you manifest, the things do come to pass. However, it's no peace with it. Um, what's that scripture? God, God give you things without sorrow or make you rich without sorrow. Give you bless, right. Proverbs 10, 22, the blessing of the Lord makes one rich and he has no sorrow with it. Now in a cult, you're going to manifest things that's going to happen. However, you, you're going to get attacked. It's, it's going to be some, some, something that you're going to have to pay in the, in the, in the demonic realm for it. You're not going to have peace. Um, you can manifest a relationship. You can manifest um, um, uh, burn ancestor money, which they do in the cult as well. Get that money. Something is going to happen where you're going to have financial hardship, car breakdown, where you're going to have to spend that money again. See, this is these are the lies that the enemy try to put like, oh, you're going to have this power. You're going to have this control. Oh, you don't have any control. And, and the occult or um, operating witchcraft, new age, whatever, the enemy just uses people because, you know, those spirits need a body. So they can't operate without a body. So demonic spirits always looking for someone to use. He hates the people that's in the occult, too. He hates the people that's working for him, too. He hate them. He want to kill everybody. He wants their soul. So you're just being used. So what's going to happen when he's finished using you, then it's going to either come down on you, premature death, infirmity, sickness, financial, however it's going to come, you know, uh, it may come on your, your children. That is very true. And like I said, the enemy is not creative. He just copies things, you know, of God, like, okay, divination, God gives us prophetic gifts. The enemy wants you to operate in divination. The hill laying on of hands. Oh, that's another thing. The the friend that um I used to you know hang with that was in a cult, Reiki. That's very demonic. I'm telling you right now, if you're doing Reiki, you have people because you know by touch spirits transfer. Right. And it, God gives us to lay on in hands by the Holy Spirit. We have the power of the Holy Spirit. We can lay on hands and heal people through the Holy Spirit. We don't need these demonic spirits. I don't care what they tell you. Oh, it's not. It's safe, you know, it's, 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 it's for your uh, spiritual uh, consciousness and for you to grow. Those are all lies. I was in it and I've had bad experiences and I'm about to tell you how I got out of it. But you have more questions. Yes, yes. That, that's, um, that's, that's very um, powerful, um, especially when you mentioned about, you know, the healing, you know, the enemy, you know, he counterfeits it with the Reiki, you know, yes. and we have to know something about the enemy. Listen. If he tries to give you something, he's taking something away. Yes, exactly. He's taking so whether it's this Reiki healing, there's something being taken from you. All right. He he does not he does not have that power to heal like God does. If he's gonna give you something, he's taking something from you. That's what he does. Um yes. and Mary says, um, she tried to open her third eye. That's another thing I did too. I would take these herbs um that are a popular in India called Harataki. I would take these herbal pills. To open my third eye and i would usually do it before meditation and i would feel like this pulsating in my head i would like hear these noises and stuff that you know my brain my ears were here but it was coming from you know my 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 third eye as they call it and um i would have these like these demonic experiences have these supernatural experiences but i knew my third eye was open but like i said god had already blessed me with a prophetic gift so why did i even need to do that that was all lies of the enemy open met um meditating talking about open my opening myself up to heal that that past part of me by opening and inviting a spirit in and all this other stuff yeah so i did that too i took harataki took it for a while and um yes yeah, so i was open my third eye all right so you were in the occult now all right so how did you well, first off if you can recall how long you you remember you were in it and how did you come out well i was in it i'll say um after the i left the church for um a brief time about maybe five years i was in a, astrology um you know looking into stuff doing spells and all that other stuff and um about five i'll say five years or more and um how i got out uh one night I was in my bedroom and I don't remember if I was listening to a binary beat. Is that what you call it? those uh, things that have the uh, frequencies behind it or a meditation? Anyway, I was laying, laying on my bed and I can't say it was a dream. I, it, it just happened so quick while I was dozing off. All of a sudden I opened my eyes and see this 
huge black snake at the foot of my, I mean, it was huge, like an anaconda. I knew it was a demonic spirit. From that point on, I could say, you know how they say scared straight? <laughs> Yo, I, I, the next morning I, I was like, I couldn't go back to bed. So the, the next morning, it was like the Holy Spirit. I say um, the, the Bible verse that says, when Jesus says that when he chooses you, can't nobody snatch you out of his hand. Mm-hmm. So yes, he let me go into that foolishness for a little while and that, you know, dabbling in the dark. He knew, understood, you know, that, you know, church hurt, you know, my ignorance. I thought I was seeking a deeper spirituality outside of Christ. And mm-hmm. Christ says, if you try to enter any way, Besides the door, which is Jesus Christ, you a thief and a robber. So I was a thief and a robber for five plus years. Okay. So the next morning, it was just like the Holy Spirit was showing me. I'm throwing away crystals, throwing away my books. Every everything that I own, I was putting in the trash bag, tossing it out. And um, I can say that was God. I can say that was God because that was like just from that experience and to that that morning. It was just like my whole desire for the occult, everything just changed. So I say that was the Holy Spirit. That was God pulling me out of that, for mm-hmm. real. Just that quick from that, that I was like, man, when I saw that black snake, I knew. I knew it was like God allowed me to see that for a reason. Like, look, this is what's surrounding you. You're, in, you're, you're around demonic spirits. The enemy probably about to take you out, whatever it is, but it startled me. Black snake, death, whatever it was, it, it was an enemy. I know, and it was huge. Took up the foot, the foot of my bed. It was, I mean, it was, and it had red eye. I would never forget, never forget. And that next morning, it was like the Holy Spirit was telling me, throw away this, throw away this. Things that were hidden, like things that I had that, you know, I had to open up my jewelry box. Um, I had uh cowrie, cowrie beads, throw it away, throw it away, throw it away. Everything he was just showing me, and I was just getting rid of it. So that's how God put me back. So then after that, I got active, you know, um, sharing my testimony like I'm doing now active in the ministry about other parts of my testimony about, um, you know, um, having abortion, we, uh, talking to, um, young kids at the uh, covenant house, uh, Newark, New Jersey that, you know, been in the streets, been, uh, dealing with, you know, selling drugs, uh, teenage pregnancy, you know, rough, whatever, rough backgrounds, people in the street, giving my testimony there. Um, also, um, ministering at abortion clinics with my late, um, friend, she passed away, um, Nicole Rosado, uh, ministering at abortion clinics, speaking out against abortions, um, stuff like that, going to nursing homes and stuff like that. So since then, God has been really been using me. But however, before I, I after all of that, I had to go through deliverance. Explain how that happened. Okay. So deliverance is a process. You know, I know sometimes we see people, you know, they, they bond and then it's all over. But sometimes it's, it takes longer. It's a process. Maybe you have to go through several deliverances. Maybe it may take a long time. Don't give up. The deliverance is our bread, you know, as believers, you know. So I went through a deliverance session, um, you know, one with my friend before she passed away. She prayed over me. I vomited, stuff like that. Yes, I was also friends with a shaman, too, as well, um, Mary. Um, she brought me through deliverance. And then um, after that, like I said, it wasn't over. I, I still had to be delivered from some things. And how I knew that was that God gave me a dream um, that it was still some residue, you know, spiritually. I shared the dream with him about, um, you know, that God showed me that, you know, I still need to be delivered from some things in a dream. So he, the Holy Spirit had me go into a 10 day water fast, went on a 10 day water fast. Um, after that, I I was on a, a, a prayer line with a, a group with a group of believers. And I after I got that prayer line, I said, Lord, whatever's in me, I want it out. Whatever's left in me, because I remember I had that dream and I wrote it down in my journal. I, I journal, I write down my dreams. I said I want it out. Let's say that was about 11 30. From 12 o'clock that and I and I and also I had things in my mind because people that um I was involved with that group. I believe one of the guys was doing obia on me because he asked me, he said, are you afraid of obia? And I said, no, I believe he was probably working something against me because the only way that really can work is if you have fear, that's an open door. So I told him, no, I said, I- I'm not afraid of that. So I always had that in the back of my mind. I wonder if he working something on me. Be- after I prayed that prayer at 1130, I had a vision that um, that he was, God showed me that that guy was doing some things. It was him and another female, like doing some, some stuff. Shortly after that, I started vomiting. Let's say from 12 to 4.30, just kept getting up, spitting up, spitting up. 
four and a half hours. And it was like, God, I went through self-deliverance, but I say it was just me and God spitting up all types of colors and stuff like that. And then people would say, well, maybe it's something you ate. I didn't eat. And when I fast, I don't get sick. So I knew it was spiritual. I was going through straight up deliverance for all that time. So that's what I'm saying. Sometimes it may take hours. Sometimes you may need more than one session to go through deliverance. I needed more than one session. And then my final deliverance, it took hours. Wow. That was, um. wow, that's powerful. That's powerful. And it shows us how, you know, God, like he's able, you know, to bring us out no matter how deep we're in. Mm-hmm. You know, he's able to draw us out. Yes. You know? and I was, I was a babe. Like I would, I would not delve into that stuff now. It's very demonic. It's a lie. It, it, like I said, it's the enemy using People, I don't even look when people come to me. Oh, what's your sign? I, I shut it down. Don't come to me with that sign stuff. When you mature on God, more is required from you, you know. But when you're carnal, you know, you're still a baby, stuff like that. Yeah, you're gonna make some mistakes. He'll pull you back out because he knows the prostrate of our heart. That's why I say his grace abounds is sufficient because he knows when we're gonna turn back. He knows how he's gonna get us to turn back. You know, it's all by him. He knows who's not. He knows who's going to stand rebellion or whatever. Some people prematurely die and they sin. Only God knows. You know, that's not for us to know. But we can't play with God's grace. So he pulled me out of that, you know, and the more and the more I grew, the more I learned the word, the more I, I learned about different things, I can now give my testimony and share. And I have also been sharing with people um, that's also in the call too, that, you know, it's, you deceive, it's a lie, it's false, you know, it's not, you don't have any power, all that God conscious and we're all connected, we're all one, it's a lie. We, I mean, one mind, one body in Christ, but how they teach it is, is that God is ego and all this other stuff and that, you know, we all connect. No, you don't want to be connected to everybody because every, some people have demonic spirits. They're not, they for the devil. Cause even, even in God's word, it says that some are created for the wicked day. That means that they're never going to serve him a turn. He knows that we don't know it, but we have to do our due diligence and just still minister how he, he leads us and uses us, you know, whoever he draws and assigns us to, because everybody is not our assignment. But I know when he puts in my spirit to minister to someone, it was actually someone on my job um, a few uh, months ago. He's into a cult. He tries to mix Christianity with the cult. And I was able to minister to him. So God put these people that's dabbling in these things in my life, you know, for me to minister to them. So wow. that's how he uses us. Whatever you go through, a lot of times he will use you in that area because and, and, and I look at look at it now. You know, he allowed me to go through that experience because now I can pull other people out, you know, by him you being a vessel used by him and not the enemy. Yes. Wow. That that that's powerful. That's powerful. Uh, I want to ask, okay, so now today, you know, you're a minister, you know, called by Jesus Christ. What would you say now to the viewers, especially people who may be watching this who are actually in this stuff? Physical, what would you tell them right now? Like I said, the only way is Jesus Christ. Um the, the new age, the cult, whatever you want to call it, it's, it's, it's a lie. It's a false. There's no power in it. You know, like Jesus said, the only way he's the door. If you try to go any other way, try to use new age, try to use meditation, try to use yoga, try to use Buddhism, all these false demonic, you know, idols and uh, witchcraft. People think they have these, this power. God has all power. You deceive, you know, um, living your life in vain, you know, you know, if, Christ is the way. He's the only true way. You know, crystals don't have no power. The Holy Spirit gives us power. You know, mm-hmm. um, all this stuff, burning candles, these incantations, like I said, the enemy just using you until he's done. He's when, Once he's done with you, who knows what's going to happen? Who knows whether it falls on you, whether it falls on your family, what, sickness, infirmities, premature death. Those are all open doors. And when you open the door to these practices and things like that, that's what happens. There's no good that comes out of it. There's no peace. There's no joy that comes out of dabbling into these things. Astrology as well. That's That gives people a sense of pride. Oh, I'm a Leo. I'm an Aries. So I'm, I'm this, this, and that. And then it, people start trying to walk according to those, those signs. It's nonsense. The man, the enemy, like I think Brother Yahya said it before, he's wet, you know? <laughs> It's not. It's, it's nothing good that comes, you know, from what he offers at all. No peace, no joy, nothing eternal. It's all temporary. So that's what I would have to say. You're going through the wrong way. You have to go through the door, which is Jesus Christ. You can't enter in any other way. 
Powerful, powerful. Um, thank you for sharing that. You know, that is very powerful. And, you know, actually, like like I mentioned before, you know, the occultic practices, you know, new age, that's very deep nowadays. And yes. the enemy, he comes as an angel of light to counterfeit things that God is doing by the Holy Spirit, you know, counterfeit healings, divination rather than prophecy, yes. you know, you you name it, false visions, you you name it. And and we have to grow in discernment. Our discernment has to be sharp. You know, um, there's also things going on in churches. Yes, it is. You know, like, I mean, you know, people claim to be prophets, but right. you know, they're actually false prophets. And they're not actually prophesying by the Holy Spirit, but actually using divination. Divination is easy to, yeah. like, people, like, if you came from the occult, it'll be easy for you to discern what is divination and what is prophecy, because you've been there. It's not like you're just listening to regurgitated information. We know that the occult is out there. We know the new age is out there. We know that some of the stuff has prepped in the church. But when somebody step to you, you will know that, nah, that's that's kind of off. You know, you you will know whether what spirit is coming from. Amen. 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 Powerful. So, yes, you know, she shared a very powerful testimony. And I, and I know it's going to help a lot of people out there. Um, even now at this time, you know, if anybody wanted to share anything or if anybody has any questions for her or comments, you know, feel free to definitely um give a testimony or share anything at this time. Anyone who wants to go ahead, you know, go ahead at this time. That was powerful. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, Nelson, go ahead. Um, and what I want to first, first of all, I want to say, um, man, what I want to say for that is that was a beautiful test. That was deep. That was very deep. And I thank God that he brought you out of that minister. Uh, Keisha, sister Keisha, I really thank God that he brought you out of that. And another thing about that, you know, God loves you so, God loves us so much, and he got so, his grace and mercy is so sufficient that just like what Dane said, no matter how deep we is in it or how long it takes, God is still bring us through it. So I just find like that's, that's just awesome, you know what I'm saying? And, um, and I also want to say sorry for your loss too, your friend that passed away. I know that yeah. was, I know that, that very, I know that, that probably still uh, mess with you to this yeah, day. That, you know what I'm saying? I was talking to old Dave yeah. about it today. Yeah, man, that's, that's sad, man. <laughs> Especially in this truth. When you're in this truth, in this word, you need that solid friend or two. You need, we yes, exactly. we got our spiritual family, but you need that one that's close, you know? So yeah. I want to say that. Um, Yeah, an another thing I noticed just about, what I noticed, I talked to a few people, you know, um, and they were, you know, they were saying they had this spiritual experience, you know, they, uh, and I, and when they start talking, I understand what they probably went through a different spirit as far as like learning all this new knowledge, probably about Egyptian stuff or whatever the case yes, may be, uh, moonwalkers and all this stuff and like that. And they, and it's like, yeah, y'all probably got that knowledge that yeah, but it's like, y'all still missing something. Y'all missing the truth knowledge of Christ, the true knowledge of God and the word. And that's what a lot of people missing. They they missing the real truth. Um, you know what I'm saying? Like, like uh, you know, people be like, I am a God. You know, or women be like, I am a God. Are you feel me? Yes, we are God. In the Bible and so in in uh in um Genesis, uh I just made a real say, know that you are God, ye are gods, but you will die like men. And yeah. even in Christ's time, Christ said, Don't you know that ye are gods? Meaning that, yes, we are in, made in the image and the likeness of God. We are extensions of God. You know, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. And before sin, we were supposed to live forever. So, yes, exactly. we are gods. But due to sin entering the earth, we had we got to meet the graveyard now. But Christ defeated the graveyard in death. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, that's the only way. You know what I'm saying? It's like, and like Christ really the only way. Uh, it's really the only way. <laughs> that's all I wanted to say for real quick. Amen. That's true. He is the yeah. only way. And you know, that's what the that's what happens. Like, you know, this society they try to teach you, well, there's more more ways to God and all this other stuff. That's a total lie. Like if, if that was the case, the world wouldn't be in so much all this stuff, this new age and peace and higher conscience. Look at the world and the state it's in. I mean, stuff was bad back then, but it's like evil has increased. So everybody got this so-called consciousness and all this fake phony stuff that they 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 talk about. You know, they try to put in people's minds, you know, it's more than one way. You can have peace, yoga, meditation, all these people meditating, doing yoga and all these other things, but people are still evil. 
the murder rate went up, crime went up. It's like evil has increased. So that that's another evidence that, you know, the stuff that they they tell people, try to push on people that, you know, you can Ooh. find God other ways. It's a lie. And Christ another thing I wanted to say. Peace. Yeah. Yeah. No, uh, excuse me. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Another thing I want to say is when you had a Holy Spirit, you sense when something off about something. Exactly. With the yoga, with whatever yeah. the case may be, like you know, it's like you know it's something off. It's like, and when that Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit like give you that, then when, when, and when you had a um, and everybody, you know, people, some people had a Holy Spirit, but everybody discernment, everybody discernment is not strong. You know, exactly. Like, you know, That's true. Yeah, That's you gotta true. have that strong discernment you because to, you if you don't, have, yes, 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 if you don't have that strong discernment, you will be. You'll be telling people information you ain't supposed to be telling. You will mm -hmm. just be, you know, you'll just be doing stuff you ain't really supposed to be doing. And another thing I I, I notice about just so-called, you know, Christians, right? Um, and Christian are really supposed to mean is imitate uh imitation of Christ. But what I notice about certain people, it's like they they get on Facebook and it's like they try to prove something to people. Oh, I'm doing this. Uh, God is doing this in my life. This, that, like, true, yeah. he's there between you and God. The blessings it's, it's going to show yeah. for itself. It's going to show for itself. Exactly, and then yeah. Of, yeah, and then I That's just true. noticed that, like, uh, or even with the cross, right? I had got this cross, uh, or this cross tattooed on me, and I, I did it when I was, like, in it, I didn't really know. I got four tattoos and everything like that. And I'm not gonna get no more. You know, a part of me was battling, like, man, should I get this cross tied up? They talking about all oh, this uh two man, they they perverted it and everything and everything like that. So, but what I noticed, um, uh, okay, so with the cross, I had to look at it like this, like, okay, if somebody broke it down, like, okay, you know, up and uh vertical and horizontal, meaning God's love and then the love you're supposed to extend to others. So that's how I took it. You know what I'm saying? But also in the word, it do say uh, any wood engraving images, anything that represent death or anything, that's 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 an idol. You know what I'm saying? That's that's potentially an idol. And then I notice people be wearing they, they crosses around their neck. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, I take them with me everywhere I go. I got them with me. Mm -hmm. But is you really going to pick up your cross, pick exactly. up your ex execution state yes. and follow Christ? You know what I'm saying? Yes. He who does not pick up his execution stake and follow me is not worthy of me. And then also the he who does not love my mother, father. I mean, he he who loves his mother, father, sister, brother is not worthy of me. And people don't know this. People really don't. People go to church every Sunday and they don't open a word for themselves. But what did God say? That's Study to show true. yourself approved. Self-approved, right. Sure. That's right. Amen. Sure. That is so true. And you're right. You know, people do things a lot of times for attention, but God knows our heart. That's why we can't go by with somebody wear on the outside. You know, they can wear a cross, but is Christ imprinted in their heart? Like, you know, are, are they really walking according to how Christ wants us to walk and live in righteous life? You know, so you're right. And, you know, a lot of things now we're in the age of social media. Everybody want to put everything trying to prove where they are, just keep certain things. God said, you know, if you do things in secret, he rewards you openly, fast and whatever it is. We don't have to broadcast everything because it's like, when you do that, it's like you're trying to prove, like you're trying to front, like, oh, I'm this, this, I'm I'm this deep. That's why I said, I don't call, walk around calling myself a prophet is because now in this time, everybody want to be a prophet. Everybody <laughs> want to be a prophetess and all that. It, it's just like, so like commercialized now. God gives us these gifts for a reason, to help edify, to bring warning to whatever he wants us to do. Not because, oh, I want to walk around with this title and have this thing on my chest. It looks so deep. No, it's all for the glory of God. God said, whatever you do, do it unto the glory unto him. You know, so we don't need to walk around. Oh, I'm prophet is this, I'm prophet that. People will know that you have the gift. They had the Holy Spirit. They're going to pick up on it. You, you know, you got a prophetic gift. It happened to me a lot. I don't go around, oh, I'm oh, try, try to prophesy to people. God don't put it in my spirit. I say nothing, you know. So you're right about that, Brother Nelson. A lot of times people, they just want to broadcast things and wear things on the outside, crosses, all this stuff. Where's your heart with God? Amen. Amen. Yes, definitely, definitely. Does anybody have a, a burning testimony they want to share? Anybody? Um, <laughs> yeah, if you share before. Come on, y'all. I know it's somebody in here that got a testimony, <laughs> man. They 
Hey, I, I get it. I get it. Whatever the case may be. That's why I sent that message in the beginning of the chat. Like, cause, and then we only got 10 people in, so it's not that many people in here. Come on, DeAndra, Mary, uh, who else? Don't be, a, don't Come be on, afraid. I'm, I'm calling y'all out. Come on, Sister Sam. Yeah, Sam, she shared before, yeah, but she if shared. anybody want to share again, it's all good. But um, I just want to say this, too. Don't feel like, oh, my testimony is not intense. We're not here to compare testimonies. It could be you was a straight A student. Maybe you, you were struggling with pride. That's the testimony. It don't have to be something like you came from the street. You know, you had abortion, whatever. You was in a cult. Whatever it is, God delivered you from something. We can all go back and say, well, God brought me from something. You know, whatever it is, nobody's judging like, oh, that's nothing. You know, that that testimony. We all been delivered from something. So just just you know, speak on it, whatever it is. It could just be something that you're struggling with right now. You know? That's right. That's right. Um, I see Talking many... About... Sorry, I, I, I didn't mean to butt in real quick, but I was trying to say something before I started driving again. I'm at a light, but, you know, talking about it, it actually, you know, it helps to bring... Also, when you talk about things, and especially, I appreciate you, Sister Keisha, and going into so much detail, because that's one of the ways to make sure that these spirits are completely out of us. When we tell on them, when we talk about it, you know, these things are coming out. So in our testimonies, a lot of times, we actually getting delivered from stuff. We exactly. getting free. We, we getting stronger in the truth when we are strong enough and courageous enough and bold enough to actually, you know, get it out of us. And we all family. We love each other. And we understand, you know, exactly. what we all love just want to encourage y'all to know, you know what I'm saying? Hey, listen, we're not in condemnation. We're not judging each other, but we want to exactly. help each other get free. You know? Exactly. Amen. I'm glad you say that because I told that to Odane today. I said maybe some people feel intimidated to share, you know, their testimony, but even us, like um, Yahaya, Brother Nelson, you know, Sam, all, it's not easy to share your testimony because you're becoming trans, you, you're giving people like that glimpse into your life. That a lot of for years we probably struggled with that we wanted to keep private, you know, just us and God. But it's like, you know, every time you tell it, like something falls off, you feel more free, you feel more free when you tell it. So people don't understand like how great it is to share the testimony. You help with somebody else who may be struggling with the same thing and may give them that confidence to share their testimony as well. So that's true. That's right. Yes, that's right. You know, um, like I said, you never know who you can help. <laughs> mm -hmm. as well you know you never know who you can help yes um and then well, another um, thing about sam though sam think sam, sister sam thinks she's slick because when she was saying her testimony i remember she was um i remember she shared the testimony in our messages on, on facebook but when she was saying her testimony last time it was like she kind of skimmed through it and she ain't really like <laughs> what she said what, what you know what the main testimony was was her my mom was sick, whatever case may be. And, you know, uh, basically the Holy Spirit in it told her to touch her and start pleading the blood of Jesus Christ over. Her. And, that, and when she pled the blood of Jesus Christ over, her, her mom was healed. So that's the testimony. You feel me? The enemy try to, the enemy try to, you feel me, cover things up, man. It's, it's okay though, Sam. I got you, sister. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, she got caught. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Yes. Um, well, I, I get yeah, I was just gonna get there. Well, I guess I'll share mine then. Um, I know um last time I was supposed to do it because of time's sake, you know, I didn't. <laughs> I'll just um hold breathe. on one second, Odin. Hold on, uh, yeah. hold on one second before you start cut. I ain't gonna lie, bro. I've been waiting for yours. I think we all have been because I ain't gonna, I'm like brother Odin, he quiet, he got two daughters, he in New York. I'm like, bro, I know he got a testimony, bro. Uh, but this is what I meant to say on my last testimony because you know it kind of kind of took up some time. So, um, in my testimony, I, I I was going through certain things. Like I went through twenty three and ones. I was on a uh, psychotic uh, uh, um, station, and then I was in a hole. I was in a hole for the whole December, thirty days in a hole, right? And I remember me standing up. I had the cover over my head, you know, cover hanging off of me, everything like that. And I was standing up for a while at the gate. And I would just, I started singing praise on like, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. 
So I'm singing this, right? And as I'm singing this, the cover started rocking back and forth off me, like at the bottom. And it startled me for a minute. I'm like, oh, you feel me? And I'm like, okay, let me, is this real? <laughs> so I started singing it again and the cover started swinging back and forth again. And that was my first encounter with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, wow, man, that was deep, bro. That was deep. And I remember one time I was I was working at he, uh, a manufacturing company and it was this this Catholic woman and I was uh, talking about the Holy Spirit. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> when I tell you she got out of her body, man, she was going in. But I'm like, yeah, that's all I wanted to say, bro. I had a similar experience with someone that was a Catholicism and farmers market. She started to manifest. Um, same thing. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, all right. So, thanks for um, letting me share, all day. Huh? Uh, yes, no I said, thanks for letting me share, bro. Thanks. So, um, I'll just go in a uh, bit of my testimony, like you know, <laughs> um, well, how should I say? Come on, Dan, you got it, you got it, you got I it. Am, I'm gonna Come share on, my, my testimony is in parts, you know, I'm not gonna, um, I'm not gonna go into yet, as in you know, the ministerial part. Uh, I'm gonna wait. Into the leading of God, leading of God, and um, I definitely share that. I'm definitely gonna write a book because there's something, you know, it's something that the Lord placed in my heart, um, to write a book, you know, about my journeys and stuff that'll really encourage people. But I'm gonna share a, a testimony of um how I came to Christ, which is also on the YouTube channel as well. Um, someone actually interviewed me, uh, in regards to it. So there's a video on there as well. I'm gonna just go into you know certain details. In regards to you know my, my calling, how I came to Christ. All right, so um, I grew up you know um, in a Christian family. You know, I, um, I'm, I'm Jamaican. You know, just let you know, I was actually born in Jamaica, um, but I was actually raised in in the U.S. Um, a lot of Jamaicans they just consider me American. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that's how it is. You're you're raised in <laughs> raised in America. You're considered American. Mm -hmm. um, so I was born in Jamaica. Um, came here as a baby, you know, raised in a Jamaican family, and a lot of um, a lot of families in um, in the West Indies, like Jamaica, um, you know, they're very um, Christian oriented, very um, you know, engage in a lot of you know Christian practices. They go to church, they raise their children up in church. They're very strict, all right. Mm -hmm. They're very strict. I was I was um, raised in a very strict household. I wasn't I wasn't raised with my mother and father. I was raised with my mother only. I was raised with a single mother. My mother and father divorced um, when I was um, a baby. You know, I was, I was a baby. My mother and father, they, they divorced. So I was never raised with a father. I didn't have a father in my household. It was just my mother. And, um, you know, like I said, you know, my family, it was very strict. We, you know, they told us to go to church every Sunday, this and that, you know, which, which I did. And she also raised my cousin along with me. I consider him my brother. He's my first cousin, my um, my uncle's son. And um, you know, when we were younger, a lot of people say we looked alike. So I I consider him my brother. But um, you know, we was raised together and you know, we you know went to church every Sunday, eventually joined the, you know, the men's choir, this and that. You know how that stuff goes. If you grew up in church, you know how that stuff goes, man. But you know, as kids, we used to just fall asleep in church. All right. You ain't really no much just fell asleep or just played games and then your parents would just hit you and say yeah wake up and pay attention but things in the in the church whatever they preach just goes in one ear out the other all i know is like jesus christ all right he died and crossed that's it mm -hmm. i don't really you know but um as i said parents was very strict and um you know they taught us the bible um you know especially like you know proverbs the psalms is you know very popular you know text that they love to read they tell us you know read the psalm read the psalms but i wasn't really interested in reading the bible like that. i just read it because you know they wanted me to however there was one book i was interested in reading the bible and that was book of revelation and the reason why i was so interested in revelation is because it was scary mm. and i loved horror movies all right all right this may sound funny but <laughs> in all truth as a young kid Revelation to me was like a horror book. All right. It was a scary book. You learn about dragons coming out, seven head. That stuff excited me. You know, you know, if you, you like horror movies, you love getting scared, like, ooh, let me hear some more. You know, it was kind of like that type of feeling. That's why I kind of love 
to read through Revelation. I just that's the only book I like reading through Revelation because what the, what it had in it. But anyways, um, my mother, my mother, um, she kept leaving certain churches and going to another church, you know, and, and I went with her. So I first started going to this Pentecostal church. Uh, when I was young, my cousins as well went there. And then we left and went to this Baptist church. All right. And we stayed at this Baptist church for, you know, many years, many years. And inside that Baptist church um, is when I got baptized at age nine. And I remember I told my mother I wanted to get baptized. You know, I, I just I just wanted to give my, my heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. I just, you know, wanted to just know more what he's what he's about and stuff, you know. So. I got baptized at age nine in that Baptist church. It was called Star of Bethlehem. And my one of my other cousins that came up from Jamaica um, also got baptized. He got baptized the same day. Um, not the one that my mother raised along with me, but another cousin of mine's got baptized the same day. So we got baptized in that church. And, you know, just started going to church. But it was just... You know, I didn't really feel anything. You know what I mean? It was just normal, just church practice, whatever. It's in that routine, whatever you want to call it. And so eventually my mother um, left that Baptist church and we went to this other church, which is a non-denominational church. And we started going there. And eventually around my teenage years, I I left church. You know, I just I just stopped going and I just didn't find no, no point in going purpose in, in this so i stopped going and i went off into the world all right went off into the world engaging like you know simple stuff you know fornication you know um my biggest you know struggle was on um, you know sexual sins all right sexual sins you know you know dating women and just engaging in fornication this and that um you know i was cursing a lot things like that you know hung around with the wrong wrong crowd i never i never got caught up in in any gangs I never did any drugs, you know. Um, my mom had definitely instilled that in me. I'm um, not to engage in those things, but other things, you know, fornication, cursing, started to engage in. And you know, like I said, I I, I, re I really couldn't go to any parties like that because my my mother was very strict. So there's one time in middle school, you know, I kind of snuck out with my cousin just to go to some party because you know I wanted to experience it. You know, I always thought it wasn't fair. How come you know they can go to parties and this and that and I'm I'm stuck in the house just playing video games you know I was I was a video game addict but I went to that party in middle school my first party middle school experience and that you know dancing and all this other stuff and then when I got to college um after I graduated from high school I went to college uh I was 18 and I stayed on campus on the dorm right and while I was in college that's when I you know began to experience my first independence away from living with my, my mother and I I indulged in a lot of clubs partying all right um things man just just indulging a lot of that stuff and you know I, I wasn't really into God like that all right I I knew there was a God but I just I wasn't really into like the Bible or seeking him stuff like that right and I remember I remember now while I was in college there was um a, a sweet mate right that was there and he was um <laughs> he was um you know a christian right you know he went to church and stuff and i guess he was getting involved in preaching you know but even though he had like a hypocritical life you know because i know what he's doing you know we're all in the same suite but anyways he was still you know telling about the bible this and that and i just i used to say that you know back to i'm telling you i used to say well you know i believe in god but i don't really believe much in the bible i think a lot of them things is like you know made up or over exaggerated and the reason is i used to watch a lot of these um history shows that they have on television um i can't remember the channel like a e or um things like that where science tries to prove certain things in the bible through scientific means to try and discredit it if that makes any sense you know they try to discredit you know that it was god's power they try to put some type of um scientific explanation of how it happened you know so it, so basically say well that's not a miracle you know they try to discredit things um they try to say things like with the flood um i remember I was, I was arguing my point with this this um christian guy about all oh, the flood didn't actually flood the whole world this and that matter of fact it flooded a certain area and people 
in those areas because they never experienced those things. They would think the whole world is flooded. That was my argument based on what I learned from these um these this TV shows, right? That's telling you, that's the mindset. That's how they brainwash you, right? So we used to go back and forth, back and forth with all this, you know. Um, but this was in college. All right, so fast forward. When I um I left college, um, I dropped out at um my sophomore year. I left. I can't remember how old I was. Probably was like, I don't know, 20, 21 or something like that. You know, I left and I tried to um engage in like um starting like business things like you know real estate whatever this and that i actually try to get involved in the music industry that's a whole different story man where <laughs> that's a whole different story you know i was i was i was just lost all right i try to get involved in the music industry uh, me and my friends used to try to go to the studio make demos this and that <laughs> all right and um i was also got involved in like a band all right where i was in this band and and um <laughs> you know, I've been like background singer and there's people playing guitars, people playing drums and there's this main singer, you know, sometimes you have to go practices doing with them. I eventually left that as well. You know, uh, one time I got drunk with them. You know, I only got drunk one time in my life, you know, and I'll never do it again. Never do it again. Um, so I was basically lost. I was trying to find, find my way. I was trying to find something to satisfy me. All right. I was in my twenties. So, you know, fast forward. There was a time where an old friend of mine, he began to, you know, tell me to come, come to church, you know, um, go to this church that he was going to. But I, I kept putting it down like, no, nah, I'm, I'm OK. I don't um, I'm not interested. Um, so he said, OK, whatever. But he kept coming back, he kept coming back to um, the next like the next week. This day, hey, come to church with me, this and that. And, you know, um, I tell him, no, I'm not going to I'm not going to come to church. This and that. And, um. Eventually, you know, I kind of gave in and you know, I kind of went to church. Um, and but there I didn't I didn't I didn't I didn't uh, find anything, you know, it was just the same thing. Um, matter of fact, let me backtrack a little bit before I get into that. I'm just gonna share this as well. There's a time, you know, so you see, this is when God tries to get our attention. There's a time where before all that happened, there's a time I almost lost my life. Um, I was involved in a situation where um with um this this girl I was dating. And um I guess um the ex-boyfriend baby, baby father whatever was jealous, this and that. And um and you know he was he wanted to basically harm me, you know, take my life, this and that. And I kept having these dreams, you know, about you know being being killed, you know. But at the time, you know, based on what they teach you in science, they say that's your subconscious fears, this and that, yada yada, this and that. You know, but the Bible tells us in Job that God sends dreams to warn us, you know, but I never knew any of that stuff. I never knew any of that stuff. Right. And um, so I kept ignoring it. Right. And then while I was at work, right, this um, this woman who um, we were very cool, we were, we were good friends, came out of nowhere. And she, now she wasn't a believer at all. She wasn't a believer, but she came out of nowhere and said she had a dream about me. I said, okay, what happened in dream? She had a she, she had a dream that I died. I was like, really? It's like, yeah. And um, she told me the dream. And she told me the um the girl who I was with and some guy, right? She explained the whole dream and she said, you know, she saw the wake, this and that. And I that startled me a bit. I was like, wow, you know, how she described the girl is kind of like the girl who I was dating. And at my job, there was this, this guy who was a preacher. You know, we had the same birthday, all right? The same exact birthday, but he was three years older. And um, I remember I asked him a question like, all right, if, if somebody had a dream about this, um, you know, what should a person do? And he told he said, uh, well, if somebody, if that's happening, you know, you should just, you know, pray, ask God and stuff. And he said, I said, oh, okay. Um, so, you know, I just, I, um, I prayed about it, but then, you know, my, my mentality was, um, I'm going to try and, um, try and, um, protect myself. You know what I mean? And, um, at that time I, I was going to apply for like a, you know, a pistol permit. So I went to the shoot the shooting range, went through all that course, this and that. And I just needed some signatures, right? So when I was going to get this last signature, for some reason, 
something just kept stopping me, you know, saying, you know, don't do it. Don't get, you know, the last signature. So I, I, I left the paper alone and I said, I'm just going to try another time. I don't, I don't know why, but I went back, try to get a signature from a friend of mine, but something was just stopping me saying, no, don't, don't get no signature. You know, don't. So eventually I, I just put it down and I said, uh, I'm, just gonna, I'm just not going to um, go through with this. So I just prayed and I prayed to God like, all right, you know, you deal with this, you know, whatever, you know, you deal with this situation, this and that. I just left it at it, at it was, I just left it. You know what I mean? So the time came where um something happened, you know, um first off, when I was going to drop um the female that my friend at work, I was going to bring her to the bus station. And I also had the um ex my girlfriend of mine that I was dating. We're going to the train station. So I dropped off my, my coworker, a female friend to the train station. And um, you went back um, towards, you know, my ways. So when my coworker came back from vacation, she told me that that girl that was there in the car, that was the girl that she saw in her dream mm -hmm. that I was with. Wow. Right. So God was speaking through her, right. To get my attention. So um, then short time later, right. I heard according to my ex-girlfriend that um her ex um that wanted to you know come after me he got locked up all right he got locked up for for some years you know so at the time I didn't realize that was God <laughs> I didn't realize that was God because then I was in darkness all right I was in darkness I just took that as oh well wrong place wrong time you know coincidences you know that's that's how I took it you know I just went by my business all right went by my business this and that. So then, um, you know, I was still, you know, dating the girl, this and that. And um, the individual, a relative of his, right? I guess he tried to, he contacted me because a friend of mine basically, quote unquote, snitched me out on something, right? And basically he betrayed me, right? And he told him, you know, I'm dating the girl with this that. So they, you know, they he called me this and that. He he was coming after me, you know what I mean? And at, at that time, you know, I was, I was kind of like rowdy, you know what I mean? It's like I'm like, this guy getting on my nerves, you know. But something was in me, right? I, I know it was God, but someone's in me would just just say, just don't go up there, don't get your friends any, don't just leave it, you know. So I prayed. I said, no, so I'm not. I just, I just pray. I, I just pray. Give it to God. I, I'm telling you the truth. I was not walking with God then. I wasn't walking with God, but I just, I prayed. I gave it with him. You know, that's one of the benefits when you're in a Christian family, at least you have a foundation, right? Mm -hmm. So I prayed, I gave it to God. And, um, sometime later, um, maybe like weeks or a month, you know, I heard that, you know, he, he died. Um, you know, he was, he was killed, mm -hmm. but at the time, I didn't know it was God. You see, I just said, oh, wrong place, wrong time. You know what I mean? Wrong place, wrong time. Coincidences, you know, because I was in darkness. I, I, I didn't really recognize that this was the hand of God on my life. I did not recognize it because I'm in darkness. All right. I just went about my business. Went about my business, this and that. You know, eventually, you know, the girl and I, we broke up. All right. Broke up. So, you know, fast forward. I had a friend of mine, an old friend, who kept telling me to come to church, this and that. And um, I kept putting it off, kept putting it off, kept putting it off, you know, for the weeks. But one day I just went, you know, as, as the saying goes, the squeaky wheel gets fixed. And I eventually went, you know, to church. And, you know, they were doing what they do, but I didn't, I didn't find anything, right? So during, um, they were having a, Bible study and they wanted people to start reading from Genesis. So I went home and you know I just started reading from Genesis, you know, just to you know participate, whatever. And as I was reading, you know, I just couldn't really find that. I ain't, I ain't feeling nothing. Just reading a book, you know what I mean? Nothing, I didn't really find nothing in it. It's just things that I I, I kind of learned when I was younger, but just the book to me. So I said, you know something. I'm not reading from Genesis, yo. I'm telling you the truth. I don't know. I, I know it was God doing something to me, but 
I got on my knees that day and I, and I said, Lord, I remember I, pretty, I said, Lord, I want to, I want to know you for myself. You know, I, I can't find you anywhere in the churches, but I, I want to know who you are. You know, if you can reveal yourself to me and give me wisdom, under, wisdom and understanding to understand your word, things like that. You know, and I was just praying. I, I want to know who you are. And I, I just said to myself, I'm going to start from Matthew, you know, because I know that's the Gospels. So I just started reading from Matthew myself. I just started reading, you know, learning about Jesus, this and that. And then my mother noticed that, you know, I kept reading the Bible a lot. You know, I never I never was reading it like that, but I kept reading the Bible a lot because I was getting pulled in. Right? I was getting pulled into it. And it's like it was opening up for me. Right. And then one day. When I was when I was lying down, I was about to lie down to go to sleep. I wasn't asleep yet, but I was kind of in the the state in between being asleep and being awake. I was like in between, but I wasn't fully asleep. And when I when I was lying down, my eyes were closed. I heard somebody call my name. Right, they said, "Oh, Dan." Um, and I thought it was my mother because it sounded like my mother. Right, so um, I opened my eyes real quick. And I looked around, I said, that was, that was kind of strange. It sounded like my mom, but the voice, right? Usually when somebody calls you, you hear from the direction you're calling. Like if somebody's calling over here, you hear that over there. But the voice, it sounded like it was coming from within, but at the same time it was omnidirectional, like all around, you know, which I thought was very strange. You know, I never really experienced anything like this. So I called my mother, you know, you know, I said to myself, yeah, I had to be my mom, you know. So I called her and, you know, she came in the room because I was leaving my mother at the time. And she was saying, I, I was saying, I said, did you call me? And she was like, no, I didn't call you. And I, I, said, to, I said to her, are you sure you didn't call me? Because it's, it's only me and you in here. And I know I'm not going crazy. I, I know I heard you call me. And she said, no, I didn't call you. And I, I said to her a third time, I was like, are you sure you called me? I know I heard you just call me. And she looked at me, she paused and looked at me for a moment, you know, because she noticed I was reading the Bible a lot. So I, I, she said to me, I didn't call you, but you heard it say, speak, Lord, thy servant hear it. And I didn't know where she got that from. I, you know, I didn't know where she got that from. But when, um, when she left the room, right, I kind of was looking around for a bit. You know, I was kind of like startled. Like she said she didn't call me, but I know I heard a voice. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of startled. Like, what, 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 what was that? You know, but she left uh, and I said, OK, speak, Lord, thy servant hear it. You know, I said it. I went back to sleep. I laid down, went back to sleep. Um, Short time later, um, maybe days later, as I was um, lying down, I had this vision where, um, see if I can explain this the best way I can. It's like. My body was laying down, right? And I heard this still small voice, right? I heard this still small voice. And I kind of woke up and said, what in the world was that? And then I went, I went back to sleep and I heard the still small voice again. And then when something told me to look, I turned, right? I looked up to the ceiling. And that's when the Lord Jesus Christ appeared to me. The Lord Jesus Christ appeared to me in that vision that day. And I remember I said in the vision, right? I said, that's Jesus, right? He appeared right there. And then I came out the vision, right? And short time later, maybe like a couple of days later, I had another vision where I was lying down and I was caught up in the spirit where I left my body, right? And the room that I was in, it began to change. It's like, it was I'm trying to explain this best way I can. What you see in front of you was was fading out, right? And I was like going back to the crucifixion. I'm for real. Like I was going to another environment. I, I'm telling you, I, I wasn't in my room anymore, but I, I was going towards the crucifixion. And it's like my spirit was being drawn towards the cross. And I remember when I was seeing him on the cross, I remember I was engulfed in this love. As I got close to him, like this fire engulfed me. And I know... In hindsight, when I prayed about this, what happened, the, the Lord was telling me about the baptism of fire, but I was engulfed in this fire, 
And in this fire, you know, I felt love, I felt joy, and I felt compassion on the Lord. And I was saying to myself, how could they do this to this man? And he was innocent. And I was crying in the spirit because of the love I felt towards him and what he was going through on that cross. And it's like, like a, a iron, a, like um, iron attract a magnet. My soul spirit was attracted to him and I joined him at the cross and I came out of that vision. And I'm telling you the truth. When I came out of that vision, every single thing that was in me was burned out. It was gone. I was no longer interested in any worldly thing. I stopped cursing. I put this away. It was burnt out, gone. My mind changed. And it's like um, when I started to read the Bible, it opened up to me. Like it came alive, right? It was just not no ordinary book. It was like, yes. it was speaking. It alive, yes. Right. It was speaking and and I was being fed by it. Right. It, it, it's like I was being fed by it. What was behind those words was 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 I was being fed by it. I was so drawn to it. I'm telling you that day once I, I understood. Right. How I was living and how this world was living, how I was living, I, I was living in sin because up until that point, I thought I was OK. But as I came to learn God's ways, I realized I was on my way to hell. I was living in sin. I repented. I, I repented. I asked God for forgiveness. And I changed my ways. I, as I started reading, you know, the scriptures and learning more, um, I just started to, um, like I said, put down certain things. My attitude, you know, towards my, my mother changed and things like that. And um, eventually I got, uh, I started going to the church, got involved in ministry. Um, where, uh, I mean, this story is long folks. <laughs> um, all right. So I started getting involved in this ministry, um, where, you know, eventually I started going and eventually, you know, I was, I started began preaching, you know, and this and that. I'm going to save that for part two. I'm going to say that for another part because the, I'm telling you, my testimony is in, yeah, it's in sections. It, 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 it's long, but that is, that is basically how I came to Christ. I'm going to, I'm going to stop it right there. That's how I came to Christ. And God began to train me through Jesus, um, preparing me for a ministry that I have. And this was in the year 2010 when he called me 2010. So, um, I'm going to stop right there. Um, you don't want to just how have you let like go into how you was pulled out of organized church into your own ministry? Are you going to save? It? I'm going to save that. That's all. Um, yeah, that's part of my testament because that, like I said, it is very long of how I got to this point today. And um, but yeah, Deandra, um, looks like you had your hand up. You wanted to um, you wanted to ask a question. I I kind of did want to tell my testimony because there is a a few things that you said that reminded me a lot about my testimony as well um i'll probably just tell like bits and pieces if i tell the whole thing we'll probably be here all day um but hold on i'm trying to turn on my camera okay um so uh this happened where should i start um, back in like December, 2022, no, 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 December, 2020, that was around the time where like it all like started and I, you know, I prayed and stuff, but back before then I was in a relationship and we had broke up and then around like December is when I started talking back to my ex and stuff but it wasn't serious and then there was this old guy that um went to my school and back in freshman year like we were still like around the same age and stuff um so I was I didn't know no better and I just thought like you know I can do this casual sex thing and I just that wasn't in my nature that's not who I was, I was always like a relationship type of person. And so after after it was the first time I really knew like I gotta 
cut this off. Like, I can't, you know? And then the second time that it happened, it was like, we didn't, we didn't engage into any sexual acts, but it was like he was trying to rape me in a way. And I was trying to push him off. And that was like, um, I experienced some things like that when I was younger. And it kind of like brought that a little bit back. And I, I, it started to bring back a lot of the shame that I used to feel when, when I used to think about the things that happened to me when I was younger. And then after that situation that happened, it was snowing around the time. And I was in the car, I was trying to like move it out and shovel and stuff. And then I sat back in the car and I was just thinking about like everything that just happened uh, for the past days that occurred with this guy. And then I just started praying. I don't know how I even got into prayer, but I just started praying. And my background is I, I was built in a Christian home. Like it wasn't like, you know, it wasn't, how do I say, like, like, we still celebrated Christmas and things like that. Like, it wasn't like a super, like, you know, strict, strict Christian home, but we grew up on learning about Christ, going to church and stuff, and we were also a Jamaican household. So, you know, I have strict parents and a, a, a type of way to go about things, like a moral that I was uh, grounded in. And so I knew how to pray, especially when I was younger. Like I used to pray with my mom and she used to look at me like, are you really praying? Like, is this, you know, she used to be amazed at how well I used to pray. And I remember like, you know, I I felt as though, even now I feel as though the devil still tries to take away my prayer life. So I was praying in the car And I just remember, like, I was just tired. I was very, like, depressed at the time, very anxious about a lot of things. And so I just started letting those things out, praying. And then I just remember this, like, this feeling of so much love. Like, it was like, you know, you pour water in a cup and it just continues to just overflow, overflow that's how the love felt like it was just so much love and it was it was so piercing and just so overwhelming you know so much joy in that moment and then it was like I didn't hear God's voice audibly but it was like a voice from within so loud that you can't deny like I knew that I was not speaking to myself and I knew that these words were not my own words And so I just remember like feeling these words of, I was always there throughout everything and I will still be here. I won't give up on you. And he was just continuously telling me he loves me and that I need to change. I need to run from these things that I'm doing. And, you know, in the presence, I just felt so filthy in the things that I was in. I just felt, I just kept, confessing everything and just feeling so sorry in that moment because I just you know I was hurting my father I was hurting someone who was showing me so much unconditional love and I was just pouring everything out and that was the that was the first like real moment that I encountered with God like one-on-one I had moments before when I was younger but that was just you know it it opened up like a it opened up a lot for me at that moment. And then after that, I was still, you know, very lukewarm and stuff, but it was like my spirit was willing, but my flesh was just, you know, got, had me trapped. And so after that, I went to college and I remember my first you know, my first year I was at home and then my second year I was on campus. And so that semester I had met this girl and she was, you know, dabbling in the Zodiac and the tarot, and I knew better. I knew better not to get involved, but it was like she kept on 
convincing it to do it. And I was just like, you know what, whatever. And I gave in and she read it to me and stuff. And I just felt very uneasy. And, you know, we were drinking, but we didn't, I wasn't drunk. But at that, that night that she had slept over, I felt like she was, you know, taking advantage of me in a way because I felt like I couldn't, I couldn't say no, I felt. You know, the same feeling that I felt when I was a little girl and those acts that happened to me when I was like, you know, molested in a way. I had the same feeling that I felt like I couldn't say no with these sexual acts. And then that night that that all took place, I just knew that I just had sex with the demon. I just had sex with the devil. And then that night, that that morning that I had woke up, something in me was telling me, get up and clean, get up and clean. So I started cleaning everything, and they, there was a certain type of smell that I was smelling. And then I had looked under the table, and she had left her bag. And I picked it up. Like, I had gloves on when I was touching everything, because I'm just like, I just need to clean everything down. I took up the bag, and it was the worst smell that I've smelled in my life. It was so bad it was, it was like something had died like an animal or something it, it was a really bad smell and then um I remember like being so uneasy from that smell alone and then I remember my whole comforter and, and the clothes that I was wearing so I washed everything and I washed it again because it still smelled like that girl. And then I washed it a third time. And I'm like, this has to be like, I am the only one that could smell this. Well, I told my roommate, because she also believed in God. I told my roommate, I'm like, do you smell that smell? She was like, no. I'm like, this has to be a spiritual thing because the smell that I'm smelling is so disgusting. It smells so bad. But I'm the only one that could smell it. My, my roommate can't even smell it. I'm like, even we went, we had left to go to um, a bookstore to get a Bible. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know if we had got our nails done that day, but I know we went to a bookstore to go get a Bible and she picked one out for me. And um, I just remember that whole day, like it was just a smell that would go by and I would keep smelling and I would ask her, did you smell that? She was like, no, I was always just smelling it that day. And, I kept coming back in the room and I just felt super uneasy. And then I had um, put the book bag to, uh, by her uh, room because she had lived on the same floor as me in the campus building. And I just remember coming back to the room and just feeling so much more lighter, even though like I, I still knew like there was some evil presence still there but I just knew that that book bag being out of that room made my room super lighter and that was that was the first time that I felt like my spirit just shaken up in a way like in in a way that just made me scared and I was like why am I scared I know that I have the blood of Jesus I know you know but being you know I was a babe at the time I didn't know better so I I wasn't really like well rounded with the word and so after that situation spring semester came around and there was this other friend and she dealt in tarot cards too and I was like man like I know better I know better what I just came from I know better and I was still convinced into her doing it and then man I just I was at that time that's when I started reading more of my bible and to the point where I was, just, I had to tell her, like, I can't, you know, I can't do this anymore. And then I had went home that summer, and I think it was, I, I was getting closer to God that summer, and I came back, and I was like, this is a, this is a different year, I can't be on the same, you know, and I was, I was still pretty lukewarm, you know, until um, it came to December of 2021 that's when my cousin had got saved in the most miraculous way and that planted another seed in me to keep to keep going so I, we started doing bible study together started reading 
and I remember oh that time that the that first incident happened with the the my first friend with the tarot cards I remember the next day I had a dream and I was eating something I think I was eating like chipotle or something and I remember spitting out bones and that was that I had called my mom and my, and my aunt and you know they went to our church and the whole congregation just prayed for me and I felt a little bit better after that too like the prayer really brought brought me out of that you know that I was in and then um okay so December of 2021 is when my cousin had got delivered and you know we were praying and doing bible study and I remember that I just started um fasting and praying and there was a day there was a day that I was fasting and I remember being so nauseous like you know that feeling right here when you're about to throw up Mm -hmm. and I just ran to my room real quick and I just started leaning over and I was just like spitting up it wasn't like I wasn't throwing up but I was just spitting up and then um I had I was getting a little bit lightheaded and I'm like okay let me just drink some water and just calm down and then later that night I had ate something I'm not I'm not sure if my mom had cooked but I had ate a little something and then went back to school and you know I was still jumping still being very lukewarm it wasn't until um it wasn't until uh this semester that I had went in I think it was um this was it spring yeah spring semester that I had went in this uh January that had passed I had got baptized January 1st and that's when I just started to take the Lord more seriously before I got baptized I was trying to take the the Lord more seriously and it was that December that I was just isolating myself and just really purging myself you know I couldn't do it without God he was just he's continuously by day by day keep pruning me and yeah I have I have more testimonies but that's what I can remember from right now and like dreams are a really big thing for when he's warning you about something or giving you prophecy amen amen yes praise god for your courage you know yes, yes that's powerful yes. testimony yes, yes it was mm-hmm. lord he's continued to um work on us purge us of things you know yes um that, I, I just wanted to um say that that's that's true um she kept smelling the smell a lot of times you know they say like when you know um, you're in a space and you smell these foul odors. There's a demonic presence around. That is true. That is very, very true. So her smelling that smell, you know, um, was letting her know that it was like she, a demonic presence was around. And like she said, she felt heavy. I have another testimony as well, as far as like, you know, um, feeling the heaviness in a demonic atmosphere, but that's going to be for another video. But that is very true. Powerful testimony, Deandra. Yes. Yes. All right. Um, anybody else like to you know share anything? Any testimonies or any input? Any input? Anything you want to say? Yes, I'll give my testimony. I'm like I'm nervous right now, but Sister DeAndra really inspired me. My heart is like racing. Mm-hmm. But okay. So for me. I grew up in a single parent home. My dad was absent. And, you know, when the father's not there, it basically gives room for the devil to basically have the dominion because, you know, you need a man in the household to set things straight. And I think that with my life, you know, I didn't have a man to like show me how a man should treat you. So I was in a lot of bad relationships and stuff. But in my youth, I was very rebellious and it was, it's hard on a single mother, you know, she had a lot of pence of anger, a lot of generational curses because in my family, on my mom's side, the daughters don't get along with the mothers, only with their grandmothers. So my grandmother 
her mom hated her so she got along with her grandmother my grandmother tried to love my mom but my mom only got along with her mom so me and my mom always clashing heads ever since I was young and you know we were in the projects you know my dad left so me and my brother we were introduced to like a lot of sexual content on the tv because we didn't have disney nickelodeon so it was a lot of like family guy you know a lot of inappropriate shows like that so from a young age you know I was seeing all that stuff so I would say like into middle school and high school I got into a relationship with not such a good person and this person was smoking weed and everything and I was taken back by that so that relationship didn't last in eighth grade and then high school I got back with him and then I started smoking and it was just going downhill from there and I was embracing like a lot of sexuality like not really like more of I was just very open to like oh like masturbation is good like this is good like I would look at freaky content because when in my youth you know it was a lot of that so I had grown up with that doctrine that all that stuff was okay and you know just smoking and so depressed and so hurt in life and I didn't know any better there was no leadership in my home you know things with my mom it was terrible and I feel like I made my identity just smoking having a boyfriend and it was a lot of pain. So I was with him for a year and then we broke up and it was just a pain so unbearable to the point where I was like, I don't want to feel anything for this dude. Let me just smoke even more weed. And I just buy so much and just smoking it all. And then, oh wait, no, actually, no, let me backtrack. So when I was with him, this was during the whole COVID thing, you know, he moved away, I couldn't see him. And then I remember like, I was with my grandmother, because she was also trying to figure out like her spiritual life. And we were at her boyfriend's house. And I asked them like, why in the Bible? Like, can we not eat like this type of meat in this, this and this because she was doing that. But I was very upset because I like pork and stuff. And then it made sense because like her boyfriend broke it down like these animals, they're bottom feeders. And, you know, scientifically, like it's just not good for you. And that like kind of stuck with me. And then more during COVID, this girl posted the revelation scripture that no adulterers, fornicators, liars and all these things will have, you know, the kingdom that they'll have their portion like a fire. And that convicted me so hard. So bit and bit, God was calling out to me. And I was like reading this scripture and I'm like, I have this, this and this, like, am I going to go to hell? The fear was really put in me. Um, and this girl, you know, I knew her, she was worldly, but that really like scared me. Um, then I went on to go ask some friends about God and I was trying to seek him a little bit. I was like, Hey guys, you know, what does God do for you? Like, why do you like God? But I was still in the relationship, you know, just toxic and I feel in a way that if I stayed with him, I couldn't have found God. It was a very unhealthy attachment because you don't have a father. I feel like you look for father in somebody else when you're a female. So, you know, I couldn't let him go. Like he was my everything. He was my idol. Um, so it was things like that. And then I was on TikTok one day. I'm pretty sure I was high. It was, you know, I'm pretty sure we had broken up at this point. Like I said, I was just abusing weed to cope with the pain um and then the tiktok it was like scriptures about heaven and my tiktok it was worldly there is no christian content on there but it said you know the floors will be like pure gold and i was like golden floors give me that so i was like <laughs> <laughs> maybe this bible you know has more to it because i had never really read the bible but i went to church and everything my family were christian so you know, I'd always like had the shopping list, I would write the Bible, but I never bought the Bible. And then to my grandmother, I was like, hey, you know, where can I buy a Bible from? And she's like, I'll buy you one. I'm like, no, it's okay. Like I got it. But she bought me my first Bible. I'll actually get it. It was this Bible. It was really small, but you know, I read it and I remember like reading about how the demons went in the pig, but I had no understanding, you know, I didn't pray for understanding. So I read it a few times and then I was still smoking. You know, I told myself I could be like a stoner Christian, but you can't do something like that. Like you can't serve two masters. And then my friends, you know, they were still worldly. 
and I had this one friend like she wasn't like a smoker at first but then I kind of got her into it and her brother so you know I was already battling like I should stop this because it's not good for my health Mm -hmm. so then I hung out with her for her birthday and we got really high and I just kind of felt guilty but you know I was still doing it and then I used to do this thing where I would watch movies and then like smoke and then make like a good meal before so I was like tonight let me watch a Christian movie so like 30 minutes before I was thinking about this whole God thing and I called my grandmother and I was like how can Jesus be God like how are they one like this doesn't make sense and she was like read John 1 verse 1 so we read it together and I'll read it because it's good So it says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So I was like, I still don't understand. Like, this doesn't make sense. Um, So she just said, okay, we'll just pray on it and try to read more. So I'm trying to find Christian movies to watch, kind of like things that are like the movie theater type of Christian movie. But I had already, you know, smoked, so I wasn't sober minded. And I had access to like free movies on a website. So instead, I just found a YouTube movie, and it was the Gospel of John. So the movie starts by saying, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. It was literally the scripture that we just read it. And I was like, where do I know this from? But I couldn't put two and two together because I wasn't sober-minded. And it was literally the whole book of John, like all the scriptures. And midway through, I just, I paused the movie because in an unsober state, it finally made sense. Like, you know, I've had corrupt things in churches before as well. And I was just very turned away from them, but I'd never known the gospel like this. And like, you could see it like everything because it was a movie. And just midway through, I paused it. And I was in a pitch black room because my mom was always scared of the dark. I was always scared of the dark, like, oh, the devil might get me or whatever. So... I was pitch black room, closed my eyes. And mind you, I'm super scared of the dark, but I just started praying to God and it just felt this light and this heat above my head. Like it's like how the clouds open and like there's that ray of sun. And I just felt that it was so weird. And I started crying and I've never cried when I prayed before. I was like, what is this? And I was like, God, I am so sorry for everything that I've done you know, and I started thinking to myself, like, the whole world has lied to me, like, everything is a lie, this is not how we're supposed to be living, and I was 16 at this point, and just the tears, it wouldn't stop, it wouldn't stop, I couldn't open my eyes, and in the darkest room, when I was in the darkest time of my life, all I felt was light, because I was just abusing marijuana, I didn't care about anything, I was hurt, but I felt the light, So I just went to bed because it was too overwhelming and I woke up and I was like, what the heck? Like what happened last night? And I'm like, no, like the enemy was trying to tell me like you were just too high. Like that wasn't real. So as I was walking to the bathroom, like I got a quick hit of that light again and that warmth. And I just broke down in tears and I called my mom and I was like, you know, I feel God. And she like hugged me. And then from that point, I looked at my stash and I'm like, I'm getting rid of all this stuff, like over a hundred dollars worth the bong, the lighter, the weed, like everything. I was like, no, I can't. And I would, it's weird because I act like two religious people, Christian people. And they told me, no, just finish it. Just smoke the rest. Like, it's fine. It's not okay. And I just threw it all away and never looked back. And then when, like I said, my grandmother was trying to find the Lord. And then once I got on board, like we both just did this together. And then my little sister, she's 11. And, you know, right now she's been keeping the Sabbath. Like she's watching her Christian cartoons. My brother, like everybody's kind of gotten on point and it's just been a blessing. So when God blesses you, when he works, it's not only for you, you know, it's to help others. And it's just been a beautiful walk. And the thing that I thought I needed, the person that I thought made my life complete, I couldn't have found God without him. I mean, I couldn't have found God when I was with him. So what I thought was, you know, a curse, what I thought was so bad was actually my blessing. And I like to say that I left one relationship to find another. And now my identity is in Christ. It's not in being a freak. It's not in smoking. It's not in a man. It's in Jesus Christ. So.
Amen. Amen. That's awesome. Yes. Wonderful testimony. Yes. Powerful. Oh, powerful. powerful you yes. know. And um, like like I, I like I like how you mentioned you know you left one relationship, um, to establish a new relationship through Christ. You know. And um, yeah, man, that's 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 powerful. You know, at times when um, you know, we're in the, our darkest moments. You know, that's when God reaches out and shines a light. Amen. You know, He pulls you out of darkness. You know, that's that's, that's powerful destiny. It's powerful. Yeah, you know? and that's powerful too because I would never know that. You know, you you know just got recently saved or whatever because you know you're so mature in the spirit you know already and um just your your genuineness you know how you speak I didn't know you was nervous that was a wonderful testimony keep sharing it yes you know like I said it's never easy but you know we start doing it it gets easier as you keep doing it you know yes. and like I said now it's a lot of people that struggle with smoking weed now you um you know saying that that's going to help someone else you know um, by that testimony, open their eyes because, like I said, God uses us as vessels to share our testimony and shed light to dark situations. Yes, that was awesome. Definitely, and how you mentioned, uh, I think you were off the line when I was sharing my testimony. So I'm not sure if you heard my testimony, but I, I like how you mentioned um, you didn't have a father growing up. Mm -hmm. Like I didn't, I didn't either, which I also shared I my to, testimony. Yeah, I to... So um, I know how it is when um, you know we want a father figure in our lives and things like that, you know, cause I grew up with a single mother. I know how that, that is as well. Um, so yeah. yeah, I can relate to that as well. I, my parents were married, but they got divorced. But once my father left the home, you're right. You start looking for that father figure in relationships. That's what I started relationship after relationship. And I always was attracted to older guys. So that was another way as well, you know, that I knew. And, you know, actually someone spoke that to me. You're looking for a father figure. And I'm like, no, no, no. I just like older men. But now that I look back on it, that's what it was. Praise God. Yes. yes I heard your testimony, Odane. I was just nervous to stay on the line because I don't want people to be like, oh, destiny share. But I heard everything. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um. And I'm just mostly grateful that the Lord called out to me in my youth because I don't know where I would have been now. Like I'm 19 now. So that was when I was 16. So I'm just so grateful. And, you know, like you said, Sister Keisha, like in your heart, like you try to get that father, you try to get that parent. But in our heart, we only have a God sized hole that needs to be filled. And you mm -hmm. both have very powerful testimonies. So thank you all for being bold and honest. I love you all. Amen. Love, love you too. too. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Um, all right. Anybody else like to share anything or any comments or anything? Um, if not, um, we can definitely call it close. Let's see. Have anything else you wanted to? No. Say? This was this was amazing. Yeah. I mean, this was actually so edifying and amazing. All right. Thank you, Deandra. Thank you all. Yes. Thank you, uh, Nelson. Destiny. Yes all who shared yes amazing and you too as well yes so, all right so um we could definitely call it um a close if nobody else has anything they wanted to share um anybody who joined and who joined this late definitely you can watch the recap on youtube the youtube channel um definitely you know subscribe to the youtube channel as well like share the video support support the the, the ministry as well um, and we thank you all for joining. You know, we, we thank you. You know, like I said, um, it's very encouraging. It's very edifying. We'll be able to you know, share testimonies and encourage each other. You know, you know, love you all. Thank you for your support. Keep us in prayer as we keep you guys yes. in prayer as well. Let's all just continue to, you know, grow in the faith, grow in love and continue to walk in the truth. Um, so all right cool all right so um so i'll close this out <laughs> and um like i said thank everybody for joining heavenly father we come to you in the matchless name of jesus christ lord god we thank you lord god for this time oh lord god where we're able to share the testimonies oh lord god almighty you know powerful you know your, your word tells us that we will declare your works in the midst of the congregation oh lord god we must declare your goodness and not to hold it back oh lord god i pray oh lord god if anybody did have anything to share but they were a bit shy i pray that you give them the boldness oh god to share their testimonies knowing that it will help others, not only free them from things, but it will also help others, oh Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah. Even sharing our testimonies, oh God, help us to overcome. 
as it's written in your word in Revelation, we overcome the enemy by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony, O Lord God. Father God, continue to keep each and every one of us here. Watch over us throughout this night, O Lord God. Continue to have your angels at our bedsides, around our homes, O Lord God Almighty. And continue to lead us into all truth, O Lord God. Lead us into our destinies in Christ, O Lord God. Whatever it is you want us to do, O Lord God, that we may not know, we may not have a clue of what our purpose is, O Lord God, reveal it to us, O Lord God. As we read your word, as we seek your face in prayer, O Lord God, Put it in our hearts, O God, and make known to us, O God, what is it you want us to do, O God? What is your will for our lives, O God, so we may be able to walk according to it? We may be able to use those gifts and those talents you've given to us through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And we thank you, Lord God, for everything that you have done in our lives, everything you're doing now, and everything that you are going to do. Yeah. Blessed be your holy name forevermore. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we give you thanks and we pray. Amen. 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 I don't know if you said for the next teaching, it's going to be on witchcraft, but that's not going to be a testimony. That's just going to be a teaching because so many people are experiencing uh, spiritual warfare. Right yes. Now. Yes. That's right. Um, Part two of the, um, what was it? What was it called again? Um, Spiritual warfare. Part two will be uh, basically on uh, witchcraft. Warn against witchcraft, which is very prevalent in the churches and stuff like that. So we'll definitely um, send out that announcement when that teaching is going to be. And yeah, it should be very interesting. So once again, thank you all for joining. You know, you all have a blessed night in Jesus name. Love you all. Take care. <laughs>